Hey you guys, today I just finished my first ever scroll saw project. I recently bought a scroll saw and um, I didn't know what to make with it. So I decided to make these cute little uh, leaf boxes. They look something like this. This is made with canary wood and walnut. And that's the way it looks on the outside. And then when you open it, this is the way it looks on the inside. So canary wood for the bottom and walnut for the walls. And then we have canary wood and walnut for the top. And it looks so, so cute. I thought it was so appropriate for the season. All my trees are turning orange. And in fact, I actually use a leaf to trace the pattern for this. And uh, I made two of them. This one, like I said, is the canary wood and walnut. And then this one is canary wood not canary wood, I'm sorry, it's walnut and mango wood. So this is the one I did earlier today. I thought the mango wood looked so pretty too. I just had some scrap woods that came in a box and I didn't know what to do with them. So I made these two leaves. So, so easy to make. It only takes two cuts for, per box and you get a full box. And really, if you follow this kind of uh, technique that I'll show you in this video, you can make any shape. So for Christmas, you can make little Christmas trees, you can make Santa hats, you can make, if it's something that you have an outline on, any design, you can make these boxes. So, so easy to make. I thought they were super, super cute. Very, very pretty. I love the canary wood. Now it's one of my favorites. I've never worked with canary wood before, but I think it's just so, so pretty. And I am very happy with this. So let's get right into it and I'll show you how I create those boxes. For this project, we need four pieces of material. I have one, this is what's gonna be the walls of the box. And this is walnut, it's three quarter inch. You should use anywhere between three quarter inch to one and a half inch. Depends on the capacity of your scroll saw. I have three quarter inch, so this is what I'm gonna go with. Um, if I had thicker, I would've went for thicker. Then I have some canary wood. This is three eighths of an inch and this is, one of them is going to be the lid. One of them is going to be the bottom. And then I have another piece of walnut and this is about, I think it's a quarter inch. And that is going to be the underside of the lid. That's what's gonna make the lid sit on the box. So one, two, three, four pieces of wood. This is what we're starting with. Now for the pattern, I went outside and picked a maple leaf and I traced it and then I modified it a little bit because the maple leaf that I picked had a lot more zigzags and these divots over here, they were way deep. So then it didn't leave a lot of room for the inside of the box. Also the stem was very thin, so I made it a little bit thicker. So I just kind of designed this leaf shape and then I made um, around a quarter inch maybe and the inside traced it again just to give us the wall of the box. The bigger the box, the thicker you want the walls, the thinner the box, the smaller the box, the thinner the walls. So this is our pattern, this is our materials. Now it's time to trace it and I'm gonna trace it onto the walnut piece, the one that is a quarter inch is gonna be the underside of the lid. So I'm going to trace this leaf onto this piece. I hope it fits and it barely fits, but this is how I'm gonna trace it. I'm going to use carbon paper to trace it. And it, I don't know if you're aware, but they make carbon paper in white and in black. Um, I think I'm gonna use the black one. Usually for really dark woods, I will use white so I can see it better, but I will use the dark one and trace my pattern onto the thin piece of walnut that is going to be the underside of my lid. Just loosely trace it. I mean, really, you have to remember this is an organic shape. You know, nature is not perfect. And that's why I chose this because, you know, if I go off the pattern and I cut it a little bit different, well, nobody will know because nobody knows exactly what shape um, my leaf was. So there you go, we traced it. 
Now what I need to do, so now what, we need, now what we need to do is to take this piece that has the pattern and we have to glue it temporarily to this piece that makes the walls. So let's do that. To do that first I will apply blue tape to both pieces. Nothing fancy, we just want to cover it. And now that we have them both covered, we will use CA glue. So I'm going to put a whole bunch of CA glue on this one. And then we'll spray some activator onto this one. And we stick them together. So now our underside of the lid, it's attached to the wall pieces, but just temporarily with blue tape and CA glue. So now I'm going to take this to the drill press and make a hole on my inside mark somewhere around here. And then I'll take it to the scroll saw and cut just the inside line. Not the outside, just the inside. I'm going to put a fresh blade in this one. I think it's too small. So I'm going to go with a number nine. I think a number 12 would have been better, but I don't have a number 12. So I'm going to go with the number nine and hope that that's going to do the job. One of the reasons I bought this uh, scroll saw, it's because it's so easy to change the blade. So that's why I bought it. Plus it's an excellent, excellent uh, saw. So we cut the inside and it looks something like that. Um, you know, I was kind of on the line, kind of a little bit off the line, but that's okay. So we'll put this one aside because we will need this piece later. And now what I want to do is I want to glue the bottom onto my box. And let's see which one I want this to be the bottom. I think I'm going to choose this for the bottom. And when you do this, you want to use wood glue, but because I'm doing this in a rush just to show you how it works, I am going to use CA glue. And you know what? I have a little bit of rough spot here while I went in and out with my um, saw. So I'm just going to give it a quick sanding, just really quick before I glue that bottom on. All right. Now what I need to do is glue the bottom on. So you see, this is going to be the underside. Can you see here? Let me see. So this is going to be the underside of our lid. This is the box walls. So I need to glue the bottom right on the bottom. So it's going to go something like this. Um, you should use wood glue when you do this. I'll just do everything with CA glue just to be quick and show you kind of the way it works. So I'll put a thin line of CA glue all around my pattern hole here. And then this one I will put activator. And now it's just a matter of sandwich them together. All right, our bottom is secure. Now we need to, per, not permanently, but temporarily attach the top. So the top, it's going to go on the bottom of the bottom. 
So that's the bottom. We're gonna put the top like this, just temporarily because I can't tape it on the top over here because then I won't be able to see my pattern. So I have to tape it to the bottom. So for that, you guessed it, we'll use more blue tape. Press for a few seconds, it should not take long. And that's our stack of wood now. I am going to go back to the bandsaw and this time we will cut the outline, the outside line. So I hope my number nine blade can deal with all this wood since they're all pretty hard woods. All right, all of our pieces are cut. Let's see what we got. Do we have a box? Why am I having such a hard time? Uh-oh, I didn't mean to rip that. I gotta keep this piece because I will need it. I need my leftover that I had a pattern on, so I'm gonna keep those pieces. taking all my blue tape off. And then remember we glued the lid with the blue tape trick on the very bottom. So we need to take that off because that is gonna become our lid. Now I'm going to use a chisel and try to remove this bottom layer that is going to be our top. And I see I need to sand a little bit in here. All right, that's not bad. I'm gonna use this chisel and try to pry open that last layer that is going to be our lid. And I'm gonna use a screwdriver. Just see if we can take this apart without breaking it. I'm gonna give you just a little bit of sanding where I marked it with my chisel. There they are apart. So, so far, this is our box with the bottom. It's already glued on. This is going to be our top. But remember we had the inside of the, the, the lid. It's still glued with the blue tape onto the inside when we cut it. So I need to pry this one open. This is what it used to be inside of our box. You see that? So, where is it? This one, I need to take it apart. So this is going to go onto the inside of the lid and this is gonna make it make the lid fit properly inside. So let's see how this works. This needs to go this way so it fits perfectly. I don't know if you can see from far away. So this is gonna go, this is part of the inside. So and then this lid goes like this. So this needs to be glued this direction. So now this is the part that goes inside the box like this. So that means I have to put the glue on this side. And after I put the glue, it goes like this into this shape. And I'm holding this pattern or a little bit of the pattern that I have here just to help me line it up. So let's see again, I don't wanna put the glue on the wrong side. 
So if this fits in the box like this, the glue goes on this side. So I'm going to do a bit of glue around the outside. And we'll do some activator. And then while I hold that in place perfectly, my edge, I'm going to drop this in. All right, hold it in for a little bit. And now it should fit in our box perfectly, which phew, it always feels good when it does. All right, we are almost done. This is what our box looks like. We have the beautiful canary wood on the bottom. We have our walls, our walnut, and then we have canary wood for the lid and then walnut for the inside and because we cut all those pieces in the same time they all fit perfectly and this is our box now for the finish i will keep it very very simple i will just be using some of this walrus oil furniture finish and i also have a little container here with a brush to help me get all into the crevices in there and i also have a little spongy sponge Let's see, I'll start with the lid. Just gonna pour some in there. And I can't wait to see that canary wood once we put a finish on it. The walnut looks beautiful, but there's no surprise there. And look at these colors here. Isn't that pretty? I chose this wood because it has that, you know, autumn colors, the orange and red. So. To get into this crevices, I'm just using one of these acid-free brushes. I'll put it in the link in the description. I mean, it's still wet. I still have to wipe it more, but this is what we have so far.